Let's begin by re-examining our electroquake experiments made to visualize rock and water effects on known global electric circuit pathways that are invisible to the naked eye. So indeed, that was from one of the previews for Observing the Frontier 2017, and hopefully you could see that the global electric circuit will not behave the same way everywhere on Earth. First and foremost, when going down, the global electric circuit, if it can get past ionization states in the atmosphere, will seek the fault lines. High pressure and fair weather drive the currents down from the sky, and on the heels of the late October geomagnetic storms, a major intensification in the European highs poured energy into the region. The magnitude 6.1 struck Italy and damaged buildings. Mandatory evacuations were ordered for many areas where the buildings became unstable. But in the time preceding, during, and immediately following the earthquake, a lone low-pressure system began spinning next to Italy. That was the energy escaping. As it intensified and created a bigger escape route, the high pressure and positive energy flux continued to build in the north. It was coming in faster than it was going out, and a magnitude 5.8 blot echo at significant depth struck two days later. Far too large a magnitude to be an aftershock of a 6.1, and since it wasn't an aftershock and at more than 400 kilometers down, we did expect to see more effects up on the crust above. Then the low pressure system, which had been moving to the southeast, all of a sudden jerked back towards the west late on the 28th and into the 29th. The circuit caught hold again and wanted to release some more. So in these specific sequences, we've reversed the anode and cathode and ran the current up out of the ground to mimic the effects on subsurface water content. Now you saw the energy pouring into Europe. You know the major Italian fault lines run right down towards the area where the low pressure system is releasing the energy. So that's the pathway. And when it comes back up, there is a lift. This is our posting on Twitter from October 29th. Italy had technically been put on alert on the 28th because of the blot echo at major depth, but after the shift in the low pressure system, it was clear that Italy needed to be the focus of Earth's global energy flow once more within a matter of days. The low pressure cell shifted back to the fault junction of the Mediterranean, and within an hour the ground began to shake again. Folks, you might recall this was a relatively short watch period five days, for a magnitude 6.5 or higher earthquake, 
Italy itself had only been on watch for about 30 hours. Of course, once the energy began moving faster, we saw it begin to finish its energy draw. The high pressure weakens. Small earthquakes strike Greece and Turkey in the days that follow as the low passes over those areas. And all of a sudden, the low is an extremely rare tropical storm force system in the Mediterranean Sea, proportionally strong to the high pressure surge to the northwest in the days before.